Alright, I know it's been a while, but we're just going to go over the basics of plane making. Because now that you sort of know how to build and fly a spacecraft, we'll focus on plane building. So we'll start off with this. We're just going to do a very, very basic design here. We're going to take a Mark 1 cockpit. We're going to put two sort of type A's on and offset them back. And just put it like that. And then we'll see how it goes. And of course, we're going to get ourselves some power using some separate remotes. So the separate ones will work. And we'll pull it straight up. And we'll call it Tutorial Clip 1. Now, here is the first basic of plane making, and that is this. So, this is just a very, very basic, we're going to turn this on. So, as you can see, it goes straight up. And it goes straight back down, running down on the ground. And of course, Jeff's going to die if we don't do something about that, so we're going to do something about it. <laughs> You saw it happen. So we're going to try controlling it using the reaction wheels from the cockpit with the same six separate drones. It's kind of hard to maneuver it. If we roll, it's still pretty hard to maneuver it. And if we get off, well, that. Oh man, look at that. Look at that. That's... So let's take a look at what's going on in the hangar. So we have our center of mass and our center of lift. You can see our center of lift is far behind our center of mass, same as for the side of the plane. This is good, this means you are aerodynamically stable. But you saw that we can just yaw all over the place without the plane maintaining stability. This is because there is no stability on the, vertical, on the horizontal axis. These wings provide lift and keep us stable on the, on, on the vertical. We don't have anything on the horizontal. So we're going to take a small delta wing, we're going to offset it back, and we're going to offset it back here. Again, we'll try to control with the reaction wheels. And as you can see, when we yaw now, we don't, we don't go as far out and stuff, which is pretty easy if I do so myself. And as you can see, the reaction wheels on this um, are not very strong. Right. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the reaction wheels aren't the best. And here's the thing. As you gain speed, more and more air passes over your wings, which means it's harder to move your wings. And if you, you're just using the same force, well, it's just not going to work. However, there is a way around it. If you put aerodynamics, we can get some control surfaces and we'll take some power on ones and just stick them on the back of these wings. Now, we'll reset the plane and we'll see what we can do with these. So as you can see, we actually have some pretty decent control here. And as you can see, I'm able to control it and easily fly over the vehicle assembly building, which was not impossible before. And as you can see, Jeff has survived again. But this teaches you the importance of control surfaces. And how do control surfaces work? Well, control surfaces, as you can see right here, 
move like this. What this does is it deflects air. So when these move up, it deflects air up. However, if we bring up the center of mass and center of lift indicators here, you can see the center of mass is here. So it's pushing down on this side of the center of mass, which means that the nose will rise upward. <coughs> because that's how physics <coughs> So, that's the sort of basic plane. But now let's add another dimension. Let's add some yawing to here. So now, we have the capability to yaw the plane. Now, yaw is the left to right axis. If you look at a plane from the top down, like it is right here, yaw is this movement. Pitch is up and down, and roll is well, kind of obvious there, huh? Let's see if we can take off like this. Yeah, we can. <laughs> so now we'll see how all these work together in flight. So here's yawing motion. It's down. Let's pull it up with some yaw. And as you can see, we're pretty having some pretty easy control here. So keep in mind we are also focusing on mainly subsonic craft. Hey! <laughs> nice, we landed it. Alright, now just to show you that control services do work and don't just amplify reaction wheels, I'll turn off the torque. Reaction wheels are now disabled. And we'll see what we can do with only control services. effectiveness with altitude because the air density gets lower and lower. So the control surfaces, they work and are great for planes. However, don't just slap a bunch of control surfaces on your moon lander because it's not very helpful. So keep that in mind. Control surfaces lose effectiveness with altitude. However, generally you're also speeding up as you go down. So that's the first part of our tutorial plan. Now we're going to go to some more expensive things. We'll bring out this, we'll bring out this, and we're going to introduce engine throttling and landing. Actually, no, we're going to introduce center of lift and center of mass. And this combo right here to just exactly what we need. So we'll just stop some all moving tails on because we're well not lazy. So now before we go anywhere else, we're going to do the basic control surfaces of a plane. The roll surfaces are ailerons. Surfaces that control the pitch are elevators, and surfaces that control the yaw are levers. When you have a plane with lots of surfaces, it is wise to disable the axes that it will not be acting on. This way, you will not have road control surfaces making the plane behave not like you want it to. So now, we're going to name it as Tuck Plane 2, because reasons. So, we're going to take a look at center of mass and center of lift. And these two are important. In order to have an aerodynamically stable aircraft, you need your center of lift behind your center of mass. Think of it as you're holding it as a string. If you think of the mass as the center of mass, but the center of lift, you're holding it by a string. If you lift that string up, suddenly, where it is right now, the nose will go up. And this is because the center of lift is very ever so slightly in front of the center of mass. So we're going to need to reduce that. How are we going to do that? We're going to add more mass in the front of the front of this fuel tank. 
So as you can see, we've done that. Now, you don't want your center of mass, you don't want your center to look too far behind. This will create what is known as a long dart, and for good reason. And you don't want it too far in front, like this. So first, we'll see what happens if we put it all the way at the back. So this is it all the way at the back. We'll throttle up and we'll see what kind of control we can get. So right now we're controlling pretty well, but that's because we're flying sort of like a rocket. Now we'll begin to flip over, we'll point ourselves towards the ground, and we'll try and recover from this. Yeah, we're not recovering. See, we're going straight down. So we'll dash down to the front of it and deploy the chute because we don't want to die. Uh, the G-forces there were probably not healthy. Oh, let me go. Yeah, welcome to KSP. So the G-forces there were probably not healthy. Now we're going to move the center of lift way forward with that, and we'll see how it behaves then. Now, this isn't saying you cannot build planes with the center of lift in front, however you will need some serious knowledge on how to do it, and probably a few mods to get it working properly. The F-16 is actually an example of a plane that has its center of lift in front of its center of mass. It is an aerodynamically unstable plane, however it has that there to increase its maneuverability. Oof! This, that's not normal. Come on. Come on, okay, we, we got control back. Oh no, we didn't. Ooh, that's that's not working. Ooh. We're gonna, we're gonna actually talk about why this is happening and what is causing it. Because there's very good things that come from learning. So, like, so, if you remember when the center of lift was at the back, that caused the plane to not be able to pull up. Now, the center of lift at the front, what's going on here? Well, it's all about aerodynamic stability. When you have a plane design the center of lift in front of the center of mass, especially far in front like this, the plane will naturally want to flip so that the center of lift is behind the center of mass, at least relative to the direction that you're moving. The reasoning for this is because aerodynamic stability. It's why a dart flies in a straight line instead of flipping around a little like this plane did. And that's why bombs have fins at the back to help guide them and keep them on a trajectory. Heck, if you look at the SpaceX Falcon 9, it has grid fins at the top which control and help guide it in. So I'm just changing those going. But now, let's move these wings to well, to get the center of the mass right behind there, and we'll see what happens. So, we're putting our center of lift in slightly behind our center of mass. This will make us aerodynamically stable, but it will also make us quite maneuverable. And as you can see, look at this. This is a pretty decent plane. Now remember, we are using an aero spike, so there's no engine gimbling. And the reaction wheel effect is, neg is negligible, especially on a plane of this size. Even at this size, believe it or not. So this isn't the best design of a plane. But as you can see, overall it works pretty well for what it's supposed to do, which is just pretty much be a basic trainer. And we're going to throw in some yaw in here. So far, it's shaped out to be not a good flight. <laughs> so we crashed, but that's how that works. As you can see, you now know how to place lift. So we'll save it as this, but then we'll also take some. Fuel has weight. And if we drain this fuel, you can see how the center of mass shifts. So now we'll try with only this tank. If you watch YouTube videos of people flying SSTOs, single stage to orbits, go check out Matt Lown, who really knows how to build SSTOs on this. If you watch YouTube videos of that, then you'll understand, because 
Uh oh, what does this behavior look like? Yes, that's right, the center of lift is now in front of the center of mass. So now I've alt clicked on both the fuel tanks, and I'm going to transfer fuel to the front fuel tank. And we'll see how that what happens. So, we're, so we'll, now we'll respawn, and we'll start transferring fuel from the, to the front fuel tank by alt clicking on the tanks and clicking the enemy buttons before we lift off, and then we'll, lift off and we'll see what happens. So as you can see, it's it's sort of unstable, but not as bad. And as the mass shifts forward, we res we regain our aerodynamic stability, which is pretty nice, which is pretty good. And as you can see, we are now flying back like a normal plane. So keep in mind that fuel drainage and fuel shifting can help destabilize and stabilize your plane. And this is incredibly helpful. Now, in real life, you may think that this isn't that big of an issue, and for most airliners, it really isn't. But the Concorde, uh, the supersonic airliner designed and joined by the French and British that first flew in 1969 and retired in 2003, the Concorde actually did have a problem with this stuff. When it, in, in, when it encountered supersonic speeds, it, could, it was going... It, there were effects on the wings that moved the center of lift back. In order to balance these forces out, they had to do the same, they had to move the center of mass back as well, so that the plane wouldn't become a lawn dart. And how they did that was by shifting fuel in the wing tanks to a ballast tank in the back. That fuel couldn't actually be used until Concord went subsonic again, which is one of the range limiting factors of that plane. So yeah, it's definitely a problem in real life as well. And as you can see, dry, this plane is also unstable. And as you can see, it kind of wants to fall backwards, which isn't very good. So again, we will bail out the parachute on. You know what happens when you have to be honest. So we'll work back. So now we'll talk about where now we'll talk about landing gear, where to place it, and all that other good stuff. So first of all, we'll get rid of all that, and we'll get name it plane 3. Now this time, what we're going to do is we're going to take some jet fuel tanks and put them here, like so. And we're going to take the Weasley, that engine right there. Now we're going to get our aerodynamic nose cone and make it look just like that. And then we're going to get our wing butts again, just like that, put them on. And we're going to make slightly larger wings this time, so we'll put that stuff there. And we're going to put a wing tank in type C. Yeah, we're not going to do stuff that complicated. We're just going to take uh, type E wing tankers and make the wings slightly larger, just like that. And then we'll put our, and we'll use Elevon too, so that there's more wing area to push out of the way. And we'll disable the surfaces that we don't need, just like that. So now we'll check our center of lift and our center of mass. As you can see, that's not the best. And if we bring the fuel in the back tanks and the front tank, you can see it will be aerodynamically unstable. So we move the tail back a bit, just like that. And move the wings back a bit, just like that. Just to make sure we can get everything correct. So now we refill the plane. And the center of mass is in front of the center of lift at all times. And now we'll put in our landing gear. Uh, we'll go to ground, we'll take the LY-10 small, put that there, and then we'll use the medium, the LY-35, and put it right here. Alright, keep this image in mind. Oh, what's that? Why did this why did the engine not start? Well, that happened because we put the wheels in front of the center of mass. This made the plane have, may have no support behind the center of mass, meaning that it wasn't really resting on anything back there, causing it to tip back over. And the engine did not start because this is a jet engine, not a rocket engine. It needs the air to function. And there's no method of getting air currently installed on the aircraft. So we will fix 
both of these issues. And nothing we're going to do is we're going to disable steer on those lanes. So we'll take our offset tool and put that back. And we'll get our center of mass and lift tools up. So we'll move this back, keep the landing gear back here. We'll actually move it back here for now, just to make sure we don't fall off of anything. Now we'll go to in, then we'll go to aerodynamic, get this adjustable ramp intake. It was previously known as the strut intake, and we'll start four of them on using our symmetry. So the engine is working, that's always good to see. So let's go up and let's go. Alright, nothing, nothing, nothing can go wrong here, right? Okay, it's a little bouncy. Alright, we should be able to pull up now, right? Right? Come on. Come on, get off the ground. Ooh, ooh. Not getting off the ground very well right now. What's going on? Why is it not want to get off the ground? Why is it not lifting? Come on. It's not working. Oh, there it goes. Oh, what happened there? Well, that is because the landing gear was too far back behind the center of mass and the back of the plane, meaning that the plane could actually not rotate and get its nose pointing upwards to allow for flight like that. Keep that in mind when designing other aircraft in this game. I mean, it flies, but it's not the best at doing it. And the wheels certainly don't help. Well, but they do kind of look like some, some things out of Star Trek or Star Wars or something. Hello there, General Kenobi. So, yeah. Now, there was a little bit of bouncing, as you can see, as you saw, but the engine is working, now we'll just move the landing gear back. So move the landing gear, stick them on the wing, turn off the angle snap, move them out here. This will give the plane a wider stance, and it puts the landing gear a decent amount behind the center of mass. The wider stance is good for stability on the ground, and they're behind the center of mass, meaning that the plane will no longer flip. So now, what we're going to do is we're actually going to go to friction control. We're going to go to spring and damper, and we're going to turn the spring strength up to 1.5 and the damper strength up to 1.5. This will make sure that there's no bouncing. Now we should see a much earlier takeoff, and we should see much less bouncing from side to side, meaning that we don't have to have a ledge to take off. So as you can see, we're gaining speed. We're at 40 meters per second. We'll try pulling up. Nothing yet. But as you can see, there's not really any side-to-side -side bounce going on here. Ooh, oh, we pulled up. And we have left off about 100 meters per second. That is very nice. And as you can see, our plane is now up and flying. So now we'll talk about how to land, especially with the landing here. The landing gear is one of the aspects of this game that is not the best model. So, we're just going to let them make do with it for now. So we're going to turn around, and we're actually going to abort that approach, and we're going to turn around again. And we're going to turn around where we want to land. We'll turn around the brakes, our gear, and our lights. The light allows you to see how far above the ground you are, even in, even in daylight conditions, due to their immense power and GSP. So as you can see, we're coming in at 125, pretty much. And we'll pull up, and we, what we want to do is we want to touch down with the back wheels first. And, whew, man, that was a hard landing, but we managed to survive it. The wheels, again, aren't the best, and you shouldn't really be able to do that, but, yeah. And that's how to pretty much land the plane. And now I'm going to show you what you can do using some of this. Now another thing we need to talk about really fast is the center of thrust. So 
the center of thrust is an, as another indicator. You may have seen me popping up at some other point. Uh, don't worry, that was just me keeping my sanity by popping it up every now and then. I'm sure we all do stuff like that. So what I'll do is I'll take the maximum on the root path in, just like that. So now the center of thrust is higher than the center of mass. This will provide a torque which will push the nose downwards. So if we take that, and we'll actually just put some takeoff boosters on. I don't really care just because I'm showing you this up. Nah, we'll, we'll go. And we'll see what happens if we try and take off and maneuver this time with our engine up there. Now, keeping the center of thrust as in line with the center of mass as possible is always when building an aircraft as it makes control much easier to get away with. That's the rule of time up a bit. And remember we lifted off at about 100 meters per second last time. Let's see what we lift off this time. So, ooh man, we're already starting to lose the control. Let's try pulling up. Ooh, that's not good. We're at 100 meters per second and we still haven't pulled up. 120 and we still haven't pulled up. 130 we still haven't pulled up. We're at 140 and we're starting to get some pull up. Oh, there it is. 145 we have left off. And as you can see, it's not turning very well, even given very minor center of mass changes. This is because the engine. The engine's up here pushing the nose of the plane down. And watch, if I turn off SAS, there goes the nose, it's just pushing the nose down. However, now if I cut the engine, so it's not producing any more thrust, and then turn off SAS. As you can see, it takes way longer to push the nose down than it did before. Level five. And I'll level it back out again, and turn back, turn the engine back on, put it on the same trajectory, just so you can see how much faster it does it. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Now I'm going to go ahead and attempt to land this, and we'll see where it goes. Our next aircraft tutorial will be based on larger aircraft with twin engine designs. These, you'll, you'll end up making a lot of these, especially for transporting things, and just in general they look cool. <laughs> so we'll get to making those next aircraft tutorial. But as for now, I'm going to touch down, and it will be this guy out for today. Thanks for watching everybody, and enjoy the landing.